GCH Guitar Academy, First Steps Guitar Course. The Anatomy, or the Components of a Guitar. This guitar lesson is taken from the introduction to the GCH Guitar Academy, First Steps Guitar Course. And you can get the PDF ebook that accompany the course completely free at www.ebooksforguitar.com and you'll find the link to the playlist of these lessons down below in the description and there's a right-handed version and a left-handed version. For this lesson you don't need to have a guitar yet and it's useful whether you want to play acoustic guitar or electric guitar as we'll take a look at aspects of both. Right, let's get started. The anatomy of a guitar. The guitar can be broken down into three main components. The headstock, the neck and the body. And of course, these can be broken down into smaller components. Let's start at the top and work our way down. The headstock. The headstock can be any shape within reason, and many companies use the shape of the headstock as part of their identity. So, more often than not, this is where you'll find the maker's name. When talking about the headstock, the most obvious thing to come to mind is the fact that that's where you find the tuners or the machine heads. And the tuners could be laid out in any way, but the most common ways you find is either six on one side or three on either side. But this isn't a fixed rule, as the makers can put them in whatever configuration they choose. With some guitars, you'll find the tuners are installed on the side of the headstock, with slots cut out of the headstock so you can see the tuning posts. These are usually acoustic guitars. And in the case of vintage and antique guitars, these could have been steel or nylon strung guitars. However, on newer guitars, these are usually nylon strung guitars. So, if you were to acquire a guitar with no strings on it, and it had this style of headstock, the chances are it should be nylon strung again. Another style of headstock you might come across doesn't have machine heads at all. Rather, it's got tuning pegs, which are tapered pegs that are pushed through the headstock. But you find these mainly on very old guitars or traditionally made guitars. If you'd like more information about machine heads and how to fit them, I've done an entire video on that subject. So I'll put the link to that down below in the description. Moving on from the tuners now. Another thing you find on a lot of headstocks, especially electric guitar ones, are string trees or string retainers or string guides. They go by all three names, depending mostly on what country you're in. And it's their job just to keep the strings tidy and to allow them to move freely so that you can tune the guitar easily. You can see here, I've fitted a set of string guides on this acoustic guitar, because the A string was touching the E string, causing problems with the tuning. And this string butler, which is what it's called, helped to alleviate that problem. Moving down the headstock towards the neck, you quite often find access to the truss rod here and it can be open, or it could be covered up with a truss rod cover. On some guitars, you'll find access to the truss rod is on the other end of the neck, on the end of the neck itself, or in the case of some acoustic guitars, it's actually inside the sound hole. And this can mean you have to move the strings out of the way in order to adjust it. Most nylon strung or classical guitars don't have a truss rod at all. The truss rod is used to adjust the relief of the neck, which is how straight it is. 
Some guitars are intended to have a very slight bow in them, whereas others should be completely flat. But no guitars should have a hump in them. And if you find your neck looks particularly bent, it may need the truss rod adjusting. Again, this is a subject that needs a whole video dedicated to it, so I'll put a link down below in the description to setting up a guitar. Before we move off the headstock, it's worth me pointing out that some guitars don't have a headstock at all. And with some, it's just a design feature, whereas with others, it's to make the guitar smaller and more compact, so they're easier to use as travelling guitars. In both these cases, you'd have to tune the guitar at the other end, behind the bridge. The nut, or top nut. Between the headstock and the neck of the guitar is the nut. Now, you might not think it looks like much, or it's important, but it is in fact a really important piece of the guitar. Because its job is to keep the strings the right distance apart and the right height above the frets. The top nut can be made out of any one of a number of materials. For example, plastic or bone or brass or steel or even ebony. Something that's gone out of fashion in the last few years but you can still find on older guitars is the use of a zero fret. And this is where all the strings rest on the fret, so it maintains the strings at the right height. And the nut is just used to keep the strings the right distance apart. You can also get steel or brass adjustable nuts or roller nuts, which are designed one to make it easy to adjust the height of the nut and two to allow the strings to move freely across the top of the nut so that tuning is easier and more stable. You can also get locking nuts where once you've tuned the guitar you lock the strings into place. However where you've got these you need to have some fine tuners which are usually on the other end on the bridge. You tend to find locking nuts and fine tuners on the kind of guitar that's got a two-way tremolo because they allow the tremolo to be used quite vigorously without the guitar going out of tune. The neck. The neck can refer to just the back of the neck. However, more commonly it refers to the whole construction with the neck, the fingerboard, the frets and even the headstock. The fretboard is usually a separate piece of wood that has the frets mounted into it and then this is glued into place to complete the neck. Most guitars have fret markers which are to help you navigate the neck and they can be on the 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th and 12th frets and then on to the end of the neck. And on the front of the guitar these can be as simple as a dot to an ornate pattern. And on most guitars you'll also find fret markers on the side of the neck so you can see them as you're playing the guitar. Something that you might have to consider when buying a guitar is the fact that some guitars have less frets than other guitars. Typically acoustic guitars have less frets than electric guitars and guitars typically can have from 17 to 24 frets. The neck of a guitar can be attached in a number of ways. It can be screwed, glued, or it can actually be one piece with the body. However, where the neck broadens out to attach to the body, this is called the heel. The guitar body. This is where the differences between an acoustic and electric guitar really start to show. With regards to the neck and the headstock, there's very little difference between an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar. However, the body is where everything changes. 
Let's take a look at the body of an acoustic guitar first. The body consists of the top or the soundboard, the rib or ribs and the back. On the top you'll find the bridge mounted and in the bridge you'll find the saddle. And on some guitars you'll find the strings are held into place using bridge pins. But with others you'll find that the strings are held into place with holes in the actual bridge. With steel strung guitars the strings are more commonly held in place with the string ball ends or the string beads. Whereas with nylon strung guitars the strings are more commonly tied into place. Less commonly you might find the strings are attached to a tailpiece which is separate from the bridge. To simplify it massively, an acoustic guitar's body is basically a box that is designed to produce as much sound as it possibly can. So things like the quality of wood and the placement of the sound hole and the size of the sound hole can be really important. On the body of some acoustic guitars and all electric guitars, you'll find strap buttons, which, as the name suggests, is where you attach the strap. There's a whole spectrum of guitars between the full acoustic guitar and the full electric guitar, and I've done a video on this that you can find the link to down below in the description. But in this video, I'm going to jump straight onto a solid-bodied electric guitar now. Here I've chosen two solid bodied guitars to take a look at and the reason I've done this is because they're probably two of the most common models that people first learn to play an electric guitar on. And apart from the obvious cosmetic differences, there are big technical differences between the two guitars. For example, the top guitar has got all the electrics attached to and built into the pick guard whereas the bottom guitar has all the electrics built into the body itself. You'll also notice that the top guitar has got three pickups whereas the bottom guitar has got two. However the bottom guitar has got two volume controls and two tone controls whereas the top guitar has got one volume control between the three pickups and two tone controls. Both guitars have a pickup selector, so you can choose which pickup or pickups you want the sound to come from. However, the bottom guitar only has three positions on its pickup selector, whereas the top guitar has five. And this is obviously because the top guitar's got more pickups. The bridges on both guitars are very different. On the bottom guitar, the bridge is a separate piece with the saddles mounted into it and then the strings are anchored to a separate tailpiece. Whereas on the top guitar, the strings anchor into the bridge, which is also a tremolo. The last thing to point out is that on the top guitar, the lead plugs straight into the front of the guitar, whereas on the bottom guitar, the lead is plugged into the side of the guitar. If you're looking for your first guitar, and you're even more confused, and don't know which style to get, then an important thing to remember is that whichever guitar you choose, they're played the same way. The features just change the various sounds you can get out of the instrument. If you're looking for a very specific sound, or you want to sound like a particular artist or band, you want to take a look at what configuration of guitar they're using, and then look for one similar. And if the guitars they're using are expensive, which they probably will be, I can more or less guarantee you that there'll be a cheaper version of that out there somewhere. The guitars I've been using for illustrative purposes here. The top guitar is a copy of a Fender Stratocaster and they're quite cheap to buy. 
and the bottom guitar is a genuine Gibson Les Paul and they're quite expensive but you can get cheap copies of them. Hopefully now you've got a reasonable knowledge of the anatomy of a guitar so when you go into a shop or when you're looking online at the guitars that are out there you've got a better idea what you're looking at. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you did please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new lessons. And if you want to follow the First Steps guitar course go to www.ebooksforguitar.com and there you can get the PDF that accompany the video lessons completely free. And the link to the playlist of the First Steps guitar course will be down below in the description for both the left-handed and right-handed version. Thank you very much for watching.